everyone, welcome. Today I am going to take a brand new Stology 365 half year notebook and I'm going to turn it into a functional planner and bullet journal, which I can use from July 2023 for the next whole year. So even though it says half year notebook, I'm gonna make it a whole year by focusing on weekly spreads. I'm gonna do this step by step in intricate details. So you can follow along with me. I will, as per usual, put links in the description in case you'd like to grab some of the supplies for yourself. It'll probably make your life a little easier. You can do this in any notebook, but if you wanna follow the measurements that I'm doing, the page numbers and all that, then you want a Stylogy half year. I will also put timestamps in the first pinned comment in case you would like to jump ahead to different points. So first, let's talk in detail about the supplies that you might want for this. So I've got the Stylogy 365 half year notebook A5 size, and this one is in the pretty blue color. They also have black, yellow, and red standard. So I'll put links to all of those in the description. You can always get them on Amazon, almost always. And occasionally you can also find them on Etsy. There are occasionally select special colors, special edition colors. And if I can find any of those today, I will put those in the description as well. Why am I using the half year instead of the full year? The full year has 368 pages. The half year is 184 pages. I'm using the half year because it's thinner, it's lighter, and it will go into my traveler's notebook setup a little bit better. It just doesn't take up as much weight and space in my tote bag. So this is an Apple Pig Traveler's Notebook, custom designed A5 size. I've talked about it a lot in other videos, but when I open it up, I've got room for my wallet and things like that. I've got room for like a ruler, pens, stickers, all that good stuff. And most importantly, I have room for two notebooks. This is going to be the functional planner in the bullet journal in the Stylogy. And then this is going to be just kind of my commonplace book, sketchbook, whatever I feel like drawing, painting, or writing that day. And that's a Loistrom 1917 hardcover A5. So this Stylogy, if I use the full year, it will fit. It still works to use the full year. But the half year is just so much lighter. It stays in better. It fits better. And so this just slides right in the front like this. And I could just leave it like that, or I could put it on one or two strings to give it a little bit of stability. So there's my little setup here. And my last video talked, or one of my most recent videos, talked about this extensively. It showed the whole setup in detail. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you would like more information about the Apple Pig or the Loistrom. But today we're focused on the Stalogy. So we've got this. I am definitely going to use a Tombow Mono Correction Tape. This keeps me looking perfect even though I'm not. And the color of the line that it puts down is exactly the same color as the Stalogy notebook. All right, so I'll link to that in the description. Then, of course, I'm going to need a ruler for this process because I'm going to be drawing out columns, especially for the weeks. Um, rulers are an interesting thing. You can get so many different kinds. I personally, for this kind of a project, like this one that's made by Staples. If I can find it still in stock somewhere, I'll put a link in the description, but honestly, I got it years ago. Um, it's really cool because, first of all, it's sturdy. It's, I don't know, maybe stainless steel. And it has this grip that you can hold on to as you're drawing your lines. I just find it useful. Any ruler will work. This just makes it easier. Um, what's also cool about this, and I don't know how I got so lucky, it happens to be exactly the right width to just put it down, draw a line, go to the next one, draw a line, go to the next one, draw a line, and get exactly eight columns across here. So that on the weekly spread, I have notes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or however I decide to organize them. 
If you're looking for something like this and you want to use it in an A5 Stalogy, try to find a ruler that is 1 and 7 sixteenths of an inch wide. That's 37 millimeters. So one, that's what this is, one and seven sixteenths of an inch. And it just happens to be exactly right. You start in the middle, draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, and it comes out really, really close to perfect. So we'll see that when we get to the part where we draw the weekly section. So a good ruler. I will also be using an eraser, again, to try to look more perfect than I am, Prismacolor Magic Rub. If you have an old one, you might have seen it, um, I think it was called Sanford. Now it's Prismacolor Magic Rub. These are white erasers, and if you use them with like a number two pencil, they just erase very, very well, and you can't tell that you've drawn a line. So I'll put a link to those. And then the pencil that I'm using is a Paper Mate Sharp Writer, number two. And I wish they weren't plastic, I wish they were more refillable, but they do last a very long time. And they come in colors or like a pencil color. And I use these for very lightly sketching my lines. Then we have more pens. So I've got a Tombow Mono Drawing Pen. This is my favorite fine liner. I think that the tips hold up better than a Sakura Pigma Micron, which is kind of probably the one that 90% of people probably use the Sakura Pigma Micron. But I'm one of those people who tries to find something that's a little bit more economical and just works better, even if it's not the thing that everybody else has. So Tombow Mono, Mono Drawing Pen comes in lots of different sizes. I usually get this set that has 01, 03, and 05, like that. You can grab that on Amazon. I think you can also get it at Dick, Dick Blick, maybe also at Jackson's. Um, and at some of those places, you can also get the individual sizes to refill. I like number three for some reason with my A5 notebooks. I use this when I want to sketch something and then paint it. So ink and wash watercolor basically. And I might, I don't know if I'm going to get to it today, but I might do a little bit of doodling to kind of add some pizzazz to my bullet journal and my functional planner. When I do that, it would be with this pen. Great fine liner. The pen that I use for like writing all my entries, notes, symptoms, lists is the Uniball Signo RT1. And I've talked about this in almost every video. It is, again, the RT1. Uniball Signo has tons of different pens. But the RT1, the RT stands for retractable. And then what's really cool about this one is that all the way from the tip, about halfway up the barrel, it's nice and smooth. There are no cutouts or anything to hurt your fingers. And so whether you bear all the way down or you hold it up like this or anywhere in the middle, your fingers can rest anywhere and be comfortable. It comes in 0 0.28, 0 0.38, and 0.5. I use the 0.5 with the Stalogy. And it is water resistant. So great pen. And then for all of my headings, you'll see this as I mark like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever the date is for the week. I use these. This is a zebra mild, I'm sorry. <laughs> mild liner is a highlighter. This is the brush pen. It's a Zebra Zensations brush pen. The one with this kind of sapphire color barrel is the Extra Fine, and I like that best for an A5, but they also have a little set on Amazon that has several different sizes, so that's pretty handy. These are also water resistant if you give them some time. I wouldn't like sketch immediately and start painting, but give it a while to dry and then it will eventually be water resistant. But what's great is that it's pigment based and so it doesn't bleed through this paper. So I can write, you know, a title of a list at the top and flip it and it won't bleed through. All right, so those are the pens. A couple other things that make this a more enjoyable experience. These are Avery Ultra tabs. I just talked about these recently, but I'll remind you. So they come in metallic colors like these 
And then they also come in pastel colors like these. And I think they also have all white and they also have a set that's really bright colors. And what's awesome about them is that you can write on them with a regular pen if you want to label your tab or you can just memorize the colors. But you put these in here and just for example, I'll use this pink one. It's almost like a really sticky post-it note. And so you can put it wherever you want here. And then let's say you're doing it to mark your weekly pages and then you're going to go to the next week. You just peel it up like this, move on to the next week, put it where you want it. And they last for quite a while like that. Usually about six months into it, I end up thinking, I want a new shiny one. <laughs> and they have several in the package. So they're very economically priced, easy to grab on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to this exact size. They also have one that is more narrow, but I like these. I think these are advertised as the two and a half inch size. So those will help keep me organized once everything is drawn out. Um, and then I also recommend writing out, like for the bullet journal part of this, I'm going to make a list book basically. And so I wrote out the lists that I'm going to include and I started them in alphabetical order and then I remembered a couple additional ones so I need to fit those into the alphabetical list there. And then also kind of do some homework and figure out how many pages you need for each section of your notebook. So I've done that here. I have the first page blank and then I have, just so you open the spread, Pages two through seven are going to be a symptom tracker for each month of the year. Then I have my kind of bullet journal list book, pages eight through 47. And then I have my weekly spreads, 48 to 159. And then the remaining 25 pages will be for like scratch pad, notes, forward planning, etc. All right, so do some homework. And then, this is absolutely not necessary, but I enjoy it a lot. Um, these are sticker books from Paper House. This is the same sticker book. I have purchased it four times because I like it so much. So it's called the Paper House Life Organized Seasonal Sticker Book. Celebrate your year. And what I really love about these is that they are watercolor based and they're kind of the same style that I paint watercolors. So I can start with these to kind of jazz up the planner, especially for holidays, birthdays, big events. And then as I go, you know, something fun happens, like a deer comes in the backyard, then I can add a deer to that day. Or we had a party and we had watermelon. There's a watermelon to add to that day. But how cool is this? So it goes through, this first page is just to kind of show you samples of what else is in the book. And then it has winter. We get into February. And each month is going to have a sticker like this that labels the month. We get into March with St. Patrick's Day. Whoever designed this set must have been Irish because there's so much in here for St. Patrick's Day. Um, then in between the seasons, you'll have a couple of stickers which are actually clear and some of them have foil and then it goes back to the regular watercolor. So we get into April for springtime and then into May, like really early summer pretty flowers. Then we get into summer and it focuses a lot on vacation and swimming. Then we get into July and it focuses on Independence Day and summer barbecues. Then we start getting into fall when we get into August and September and October and November. There's a lot of Halloween oriented things, pumpkin stuff, pumpkin spice and everything nice. Then it gets into December. Lots of pretty Christmas and winter themes. 
And then it has kind of just like in general, you know, birthdays, regular, just interesting parties. And then it has things that you can use for like habit tracking, stuff like that. So it's really an amazing collection of beautiful stickers. They peel off easily, they stick well. And as you can see, I like them so much, I'm on the fourth set. And so what I do, I, have, I haven't used all of them from the first set. So let's see, I think this one I've used the most, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one is brand new. I don't think I've used any of these. So I just kind of flip through them until I figure out what I want to use. And I start with the one that has the least left. I'm trying to use it up. All right. So seasonal sticker book from Paper House. And there's a coupon code in the description. If you go to the Paper House website, um, you can get, I think it's a 20% discount. So it's, it's significant. So check that out. If you get them on Amazon, um, they're almost always in stock, but the price fluctuates as, you know, just like everything else on Amazon. So you might want to price shop and look at both Amazon and the Paper House website. All right, so those are the supplies that I am using. I also would recommend, if you've been doing forward planning, that you have your page for forward planning handy from your old planner that you're moving from. And I also recommend having a calendar handy. So whether it's on your phone and you can just pull it up, or if you have a printed calendar somewhere, it's good to check your dates as you're writing them in. All right, so we've got all the supplies. Let's get to it. This is exciting. All right, so I mapped out the plan here. And as I open this, we've got the cover, which is awesome, by the way. If something spills on it, it'll just wipe right off. The paper itself is FSC certified, so it's eco-friendly, that's a positive. You have this little end paper first, which I never do anything with, and then you have the first page, and I usually wait until I've finished using it, and then I go back and decorate kind of a cover page that tells the dates that I used it. And we start with pages two and three. And I'm going to start off with a symptom tracker. And that's going to go July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June for that whole year. So I want to divide this in half so that I can get one month on each side of the page. So let's count here. We've got one, two, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. I should have done that before I made the video. All right, so we have thirty-four squares across, and we have forty-eight squares up and down and they are four millimeters square all right so 34 divided by 2 is 17 so we want to count across 17 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 and then we're going to draw a little line and we're going to line up our ruler so that it matches the line of the squares. And I'm just going to draw a light pencil line like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the next page. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now, pro tip. 17 across goes exactly to the beginning of where Stalogy has its little like months, days that I never use. Right where it says January, that's 17 across. That's exactly halfway across the page. So I showed you how to measure it, but you really don't need to. Just go to the J, line it up, and draw your line. And then, once you've already done that once, you can actually 
sort of see your line ghosting a little bit and you can just line it up and do another one, line it up and do another one. And then this is the last set. All right, so now let's letter these. So we've got January, February. Oh, I messed up already. I messed up on the first page. Thankfully, I have that Tombow Mono correction tape. I totally forgot this is starting in July. So I'm going to cover this up. Oh, fail. All right, I promise, once this all gets filled in, you're never gonna notice that. Tombow Mono Correction Tape, thank you. All right, July. August. October and then I'm gonna put the year because I found that when I go flipping back a couple years later and I look at my symptom list it helps to have the year included so this is 23 okay pro tip wait a little bit for that to dry give it like a minute because if you go straight to do the next one, then it might rub off a little bit. So let's give that a second. And I always, you know, when you say like measure 14 times cut once, I do that too. So July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Yay, that works. All right, so now we have November. December. Now we have January, February, and then we're going to wait. Just give that, you know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute. You could use a blotter sheet. Really, I find that Stalogy dries a lot faster than Tomoe River. Like if you're used to using a Hobonichi Tacho Cousin, I think you'll find that the Stalogy dries much faster. But you still want to give it a minute. Alright, now we have March. April. May. And June. Okay, all right, now we flip back to July, and this is what I'm going to do for all of these. So I'm going to do the first one, and then I'll skip ahead so you don't have to sit through every excruciating detail of it. I am out here, I'm going to, you know, because I have descenders in my lettering, I want to leave a little bit of room at the top, so I'm going to skip two squares and go down to the next one. And I'm going to put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on. All right, July has 31 days, so I've made 31 lines. Part of the bottom is going to be for notes about that month. And like I said, I'm doing health for this. You could use it for forward planning. You could use it for some kind of a habit tracker. You could do like a little one line a day journal, or maybe you could do, um, you know, a different 
verse from scripture that you would like to focus on that day. So many ways to use this, but mine is health oriented. So the bottom part that isn't filled in is going to be for notes at the end of the month. I kind of go back and recap. But each day is going to be like what my temperature was that day, or if I had a migraine, I'll write that. I usually write the number of hours that I slept that night, and I just write them in really, really tiny. So what I've found helps to keep it in order is to put the days of the week, the initials right there. So we need to figure out what day July 1st is. And that's why I said it's really good to have a calendar with you. So July 1st is a Saturday. So I'm going to put an S A for Saturday, S U for Sunday, then M T W T H F S A S U M T W T H F S A S U and so on. Okay. So I've got July 2023, the 1st through the 31st, starting on Saturday, etc. And then as I'm writing them in, it just makes it easier. I don't have to remember what number the date is. I'm in order. You know, yesterday was Thursday. Okay, today's Friday. I write how many hours I slept, and it just makes it easier to track. So then we go to August, and we do the same thing again. So 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and so on. And same with the dates. So we ended on Monday. So now this is going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so on. So I'm going to finish these and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm interrupting my process to give you a pro tip that I just remembered. Pencil boards. This can be so helpful at a time exactly like this. So I finished July, August, September, and October. I've written in the dates and the days of the week. Now I'm ready to do November. But remember how I said you want to wait for it to dry so it doesn't transfer? Also, when you're using gel pens, it's a good idea to use a pencil board in between the page behind so that when you write like this, it doesn't transfer from the pressure. And you can purchase a pencil board. They're online, I can find you some and put them in the description, but you can also just make them. So this was packaging from a journal that I got from Valerie. And it has like this frosted material. It's bendy, but it's still sturdy. It's not gonna rip. And I just use regular scissors and I cut corners like this so that it would be rounded and it wouldn't be sharp and then I cut it at a size where it sticks out just a little bit in an A5 which is great because when you're painting then it catches that and then it doesn't transfer to the next page but when you're using it as a pencil board like this you put it in here switch to the next page start writing and then you won't have any transfer so that is really helpful. Now I'm ready to start on November. And I'll check back in when I'm finished with this step. Okay, so through the magic of YouTube, I am all finished. I've got July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. Now, if I wanted this to look super clean, I could erase the lines. But honestly, I like having them there as a guide, so that's just fine with me. All right, so let's move on to the list book section. This is effectively going to be pages 8 through 47 for me, at least the way that I've mapped out the way I want my list to go. So I'm going to walk you through the lists that I'm going to include. And quickly, let me show you what they're all going to look like. So I will start. And for example, this one is automotive. I'm just going to go to the top left of the first page and write automotive.
And again, this is that Zebra Sensations brush pen. And it's really great for beginners, I think, because it's easy to control. So you're just gonna do your thin upstrokes, thick downstrokes, and basically this is just my normal handwriting. I just kind of think about it more as I write the letters with this brush pen. But otherwise, it's just the way I write. So I have automotive, and then I allotted two pages for that. So this is page one, this is page two. Then the next one is going to be beauty, and I'll do the same thing. And so on. Okay, I'm back and through the magic of YouTube again, I have completed my list book pages. I wrote in the names, decorated them a little bit with that Paper House Life Organized Seasonal Sticker Book. So let me walk you through the entries here and how I use them and how I decorated them. So first we have automotive. Yes, that's a bicycle. I could have found, there is actually a car sticker in here. But I liked the bike. I thought it was really pretty and it was a nice way to start off. So automotive, I write down, you know, when I take the car in for service, date, what they did, how much it cost, when I need to come back. Registration renewal, driver's license renewal, etc. And for the period of a year, these two pages, that'll be enough. Same theory here with beauty. Two pages on the date that I went, what she did, how much it cost, and you know, notes for next time. And I chose these pretty little flags because those are the exact colors that she uses in her logo, the salon that I go to, and um, how she's decorated the salon. So that was just fitting. Then we have calendars of events. I use this for cultural opportunities. I love going to you know, concerts, um, lectures, workshops, just kind of first Friday type things. So I have not the actual events, I have the places that they happen. So when I sit down to do my planning for the next couple of months, I will kind of check through here and make sure I've looked at all the universities, all the area libraries, museums, um, you know, art groups in the area, that kind of thing. And sticker here, guitar, and to-do, fun stuff to do. Next one is financial, and this is like when I paid my sales tax, when I paid you know, income tax, notes about them. Again, two pages should be enough. And I didn't decorate that because honestly, I couldn't find a sticker that fit. Oh wait, here's one. Why don't we... use this one. So we'll pay Uncle Sam. Lots of this is about taxes. Okay, then we have healthy foods and I liked this pretty little watermelon for that. So again, this is like you're going to the grocery store. This is going to function as my wallet as well. I've already gotten all the staples and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I'm out of ideas. I really need to get some healthy, new, fun things. Well, you're watching YouTube videos or you're watching some kind of a documentary, you're reading a magazine and you're hearing foods that you need to be eating more often. You know, this is good for this, that's good for that. So almonds and salmon and blueberries and all that good stuff. A list of healthy foods front and center when I'm at the grocery, I always know I can just flip to this page and I'll be inspired. Happy mail sent and happy mail received. So I have this little envelope with a heart here, and then this one is a typewriter that says love. Those were in the Valentine section of the seasonal sticker book. Happy mail sent is literally, you know, if I mail someone a gift, and then happy mail received is, you know, anything that comes in from friends and family. I will jot down the date and who sent it and what they sent. Then I have hashtags, and I cheated here. If I had taken the time to rewrite my entire hashtag list, it would have taken a very, very, very long time. So I used my handy Epson multifunction color copy printer, all that thing in one, and I Xeroxed um, from, I've got lists in my traveler's notebook, 
my standard size that I've been in for the last couple of years. So I just Xeroxed those pages and here we go. Or I guess I Epsoned them. Hashtags, what do I do with this? Well, if you are using Instagram for any kind of a promotional purpose, um, you use it for your business, the algorithm doesn't like it when you use the same hashtags all the time. In fact, they'll dock you for it. They want you to have kind of a mix and appeal to maybe different people, appeal to different pages. So what I do is I make lists of like all the hashtags that might possibly apply to what I'm posting about art and journaling and, you know, thoughtful living and watercolor and all that good stuff. So I have all these hashtags and then I color coded them like, like pink, blue, green, turquoise, pink, blue, green, turquoise, etc. And so it goes all the way through and I sit down and I say, okay, today I'm ready for tur turquoise and I only use hashtags that are highlighted turquoise. And then the next time blue and the next time green and the next time, you know, pink. And I have so many of them that I end up almost never, um, it, it'd be almost statistically impossible for me to use the same exact list again the next time. So hopefully the algorithm appreciates that and posts my stuff where people can actually see it. Okay, so I've got hashtags and I have healthcare. Um, this was also from the seasonal sticker book. You grow through what you go through and healthcare page one and two and three and four and then here's pretty little butterfly just to make going to the doctor happier and I will write the date that I went what we talked about anything that was prescribed then I have last time I and I put a little reminder with a pretty little yellow flower last time I changed the fireplace candle batteries last time I changed the bedroom candle batteries because I'm trying to figure out which brand of batteries last the longest um, also last time I changed bedding like big time changed everything and last time I had a migraine and that usually takes up like this whole amount so that's just a handy reference movies and series one two another spread, another spread. And you've probably seen these before if you've watched my journal flip videos, but what I do is I put the title of the movie or series that's been recommended. So a friend says, hey, you might really like Northern Exposure, or someone says, gosh, you know, have you watched Alaska Daily yet? So I write down the titles, I write down whoever the star is, just to jog my memory, and then I write down the service or the channel that I can find it or if I need to request a DVD. And so I put that there and then I leave a space over here on the left to give it a letter grade. So once I finish it, give it a letter grade. If I did not finish it because I really disliked it, then I put DNF for did not finish. So over the course of a year, this should be enough room. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies and series because I like to have them on in the background when I'm editing, when I'm making art, when I'm, you know, doing social media work, computer work, accounting, all the little things that go into running a small business. It's fun to have a good series on in the background. Okay, then phone numbers and hours. This is for um, local things. My pharmacy, my art supply shop, hardware store, post office, things like that so that I don't have to look them up every time. It's just simple. There they are, ready to go. Phone number if I need to call it and their typical hours. Quotes to remember, and this was from the sticker book. It says, all you need is love and I will not sing it. So quotes to remember can come from movies, songs, friends, books, etc. We have recommended, and recommended is, as you can see, the stars. It's for when you're looking on Facebook, for example, on the community board, and you know, for your neighborhood, and somebody says, oh, you guys, I found the best handyman. He's so good at installing curtains. I don't know, whatever the thing is that you need done. I will jot that down and jot down their phone number. 
or if somebody says, hey, you've got to try this new restaurant, I'll mark it. And then I also leave a note to check off that I actually like tried the place or called the person, etc. Snail mail addresses. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, just family and friends that I write to a lot have their addresses in here. Wins to savor. I think this is my favorite spread. It says enjoy today. And the whole point of wins to savor is for those days when you get home and you're like, ah, oh, that was perfect. It was a perfect concert. It was a perfect walk in the park. It was a perfect kind of photo walk somewhere, looking at architecture I haven't seen. Whatever it is, I had a great day. And I'll just do like a little one-liner reminder of how nice it was. And at the end of that calendar year that I've been using this book, I can look back and see all those happy things in one place. All right, so we're done with the list book. It's time to do the weeklies. This is the bulk of this functioning functional planner system so I told you at the beginning that this ruler is magic and it just happens to be exactly the right width but what if you don't have the magic ruler so let me make a little mark here so you're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight every eight boxes you're going to make a mark. And then you're going to go put your ruler next to it. And in my case, I'm just going to draw another line. But you're going to go eight more boxes, eight more boxes, and so on. And I'm just going to draw that kind of nice and loose with my pencil. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. every eight boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Line it up. Draw a line. Line it up. Draw a line. And occasionally I'll get a little out of whack but for the most part I try to keep the top of the line flush with the top of the boxes. Am I making you seasick? Is the camera shaking a little bit? Okay so we now have eight columns and this is where you get to decide. Do you want it to go notes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or do you want it to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, notes. Well, I kind of think of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as the weekend. Basically, Friday just rolls right into the weekend. And I like to have my notes over here on the right because if you take an advertising class, you'll learn that people start up here and your eye naturally gravitates like this across the page. Really, it's like kind of this. But you end up over here. That's where your eye eventually lands. Your eye doesn't necessarily land over here and stay here. So I found that with my to-do lists, kind of that like bullet journal aspect of my planner, for some reason I get more stuff done if I have that column over here on the right. So I'm gonna start this and say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then this is going to be notes. Now, when did this, does this start? So I get out my phone and I look at this whole planner system is going to go basically from July 2023 to June 2024. But July 1st is a Saturday. So we're going to go back and do that last week of June as well. So Monday is the 26th, 27, 28, 29, 31, and 2. 
So this is June 26th through July 2nd, 2023, like so. All right. I am not going to write in anything else at this point. I'm going to do maybe three or four months worth. I probably won't do the whole thing today. It takes a long time to sketch them out. What I'm probably gonna do is go out in my sunroom. I'm gonna listen to a baseball game. I'm gonna do maybe like July, August, September, and October probably. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to decorate it with stickers and put in holidays and birthdays. And that's about it because I like to have kind of the freedom to do whatever I want during the week here. And what typically happens is I usually end up having, like I'll draw sunshine, cloud, you know, tornado, <laughs> thunderstorm, whatever. I'll sketch the weather at the top as it happens. I'll put in big, bold things that have to be done, you know, a bill that has to be paid on a certain date. I'll put that in with the Zebra Sensations brush pen so it's nice and bold with a little checkbox beside it. And then I'll leave kind of this whole space for filling in things that need to be done. I'll get my forward planner from my last planner and I'll put in dates that I already know are ready to go. And then as I use it, I'll fill in what actually happened so that it ends up being a memory keeping device as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of the weeks. Let me do one more with you. And then I'll skip ahead. So Sunday was the second, so we're gonna start with Monday, July 3rd. Oops, it would help if I had drawn the lines, right? All right. So again, this is eight boxes from the center. I will clean them up just a little bit. Probably I won't end up being this persnickety about them all the way through, but at least to start we'll have it look really nice. All right, so this is gonna be Monday the 3rd. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the July third through ninth, twenty twenty. Okay, and I'll just show you how I would do it. So I'll get my sticker book out. And again, I'll start with one that I've used most of them. Oops. And one thing that I do at the beginning of the month is put a sticker that has the name of the month. So let's find one that hasn't been used yet. Here we go. So here is July. Now remember I said I'm probably going to draw the weather as it happens at the top. So I might put this down just a little bit. All right, July 1st. And then we have a holiday on the 4th. And they have a lot of 4th of July stickers in here. Um, there's some fireworks, 
little Uncle Sam hat, flag, bunting. I like the bunting, that's pretty. A little heart, I think I'll use this one this time. A heart and a firework. So here's the firework and here's the heart. We can see the most amazing fireworks from inside my house. Like our sunroom looks out in such a way that it almost looks like it was designed specifically to be shown in our backyard. And so, you know, if it's really nice weather, we'll sit out in the backyard and watch it. But if it's, you know, super hot and sticky and humid, we'll, you know, put on music in the sunroom, turn on all the lights, of course, and you can just sit there and it's, it's truly like a, personal show. I just love it. So we've got fireworks for the fourth. All right. So I'm just going to keep doing that for, like I said, July, August, September, October. I'll come back and then I'll show you what I did. Okay, here we go again through the magic of YouTube. I have completed all the way from June 26th through the end of September. And then next time I have, you know, a couple hours to listen to something and methodically go through and fill out the rest, I'll do that. But let me walk you through at least the next couple of months. So I've got my lines in for all of those weeks and I've written Monday through Sunday and the date for all of those weeks. Then I went through and I marked things like bank, bills, pay the rent, really important things that happen every month. And then I went through and put a couple of just little reminder things. I have a lot more personal ones to add off camera, but for now I put in some of my to-do list items in the right hand corner and just a couple things sprinkled throughout. Then I attacked it with stickers. So we've got the seasonal sticker books. <laughs> you can certainly do a calendar year with one of these, but I just happen to have several <laughs> collected from the last couple of years, and so I'm trying to use up the stickers I have, so I just applied them kind of liberally through here. So each spread has kind of its own color scheme. The beginning of July feels blue to me for some reason, so I've got the July lettering from the book. Um, it already had some fireworks that had a little bit of turquoise in them, so I matched it with this Hello Summer sticker. Then July 3rd through 9th, I've got fireworks on the 4th with a little American flag heart and then a coordinating flower. Then we go July 10th through 16th and I just put some summary, you know, like a little hibiscus flower it looks like and then it says I love summer and that one has a little bit of a gold accent, some of them do. And this will get filled up, you know, as I put the weather across here every day, as I start writing in appointments and then what I actually did, and then maybe something fun happens and I decide to illustrate it while I'm there, you know, kind of like an urban sketching type thing. This will end up being very covered, but right now it's going to start pretty minimalist, so I have room to use it, basically. All right, then July 17th through 23rd, we got a watermelon sugar vibe here. There are a lot of watermelon stickers in this sticker book. So I put like this one here and this little watermelon flag here and a tiny piece down here. Then we've got July 24th through 30th. And again, summer, bright, bright, bright red, a little bit of blue. So we have a flower over here and then just a heart. July 31st through August 6th, I was thinking about how it's usually really hot that week. It just, it's like, it's, it's probably the hottest week of the year, statistically, where I live. So I put Here Comes the Sun sticker and then the beginning of August. Then we have August 7th through 13th. We actually have like, for some reason we're voting. It's an odd time to do it, but we're doing it on August 8th. So I had to remind myself to vote. And then this is a little clear um, foil sticker. Every summer has a story and some flip-flops. So we're doing gold, kind of dark gray and turquoise on this spread. 
then just to, I, I don't like to have the same colors every single week in a row. It's nice to mix them up so that each week feels a little different and has its own identity. So we've got August 14th through 20th. I just have some pretty flowers. August 21st through 27th, I actually didn't put any stickers. I need to paint something. This is usually the time of the year that I'm going out to county fairs and concerts and sporting events and things like that. So I'll, I'll find something to paint in here and give that week some color. Then I have August 28th through September 3rd. We've got September beginning here. And the September lettering just had a pretty little branch like this, just green. So I added a little more greenery here and here. And then I drew a little football. Anything that I'm going to paint in, I use that Tombow Mono drawing pen that I mentioned at the beginning. So I drew a little football and I will paint that for the first football game of the year. Then September 4th through 10th is another blank one. There are so many things that I could do with this and I'm going to let the week dictate it. So sometimes in September we are already having some leaves changing, we're getting cooler evenings, and I might end up painting like maple leaves across here. Other times in September it's 95 degrees, it's like hurricane central, and it's just not pleasant. So you don't want to be painting like maple leaves at that time. So I left it blank and we'll see how that week turns out. September 11th through 17th, um, we have some family celebration things, so I put a little, like, party flags, and then I will add to that as the week goes. Probably some balloons and cupcakes. And then we have September 18th through 24th. I have a day I like to remember, so I put a little heart there, and then that was pink, so I added a pink flower. And then we have September 25th through October 1st. And the October sticker that Paper House uses has a little cobweb to get you into the Halloween spirit. So I put a little pumpkin to go with that and then a Hello Fall sticker. Hopefully we'll be getting into fall temperatures at that point and we can talk about pumpkin spice and everything nice. And then the rest of the pages are blank. So what I'll do is I'll count out, I needed to go up through page 159 and mark that off. And these will be the rest of the weeklies as I get time to fill them out. And then the last 25 pages of the book are blank. And I'm going to leave the very last page here for pen testing. And I'm going to do forward planning on the next to the last page. So I always know I can just flip to that. So we'll write forward planning like that. And then I will draw. This. So again, we'll have eight columns. And I'll show you how I plan ahead. So let's get that Zebra Sensations brush pen again. This planner, once I have filled out all the lines and all the dates, is going to go through June 2024. So I want my forward planning to start in July. So this will be July 2024, August, September, October, November, December. And then I'm gonna go 2025, 2026, and that's some long range planning. So there we go. But August 2024, September 2024, and so on. Okay, and I didn't need that little mark there, so we'll cover that up. Oops. All right. 
So then as things pop up, let's just say, um, you know, August 2024, you mark the day that school starts or something like that. I can just put dates in here anywhere for that month, July, August, September, and so on. And then for 2025 and 2026, the whole year at a time. There's just not enough to merit doing months that far out. So forward planning will be the last couple of pages and that part in between, I think now we're down to about 23 pages back here. This can be used for just a scratch pad, random little notes, things that, you know, you don't want to put it in your pretty planner pages and you don't want to put it in your pretty, you know, artful commonplace book. Maybe you just want to jot some long division really quickly or you're jotting a note while you're on hold that kind of thing can just go in here. So just a few scratch pages at the back. All right, now to make this easier to use, I'm going to put my tabs in. And I have a color system, and it's the one I've used for years, and my brain, I don't even have to label the tabs anymore because my brain knows what's what. So I always put silver on my health record and if you see this if I put it right here I'm not going to be able to write on July 1st through 9th so eventually after after about the 9th of July I'll move this back up and it can take its proper place up here at the top but for right now we're going to put it down a little bit farther just so that I can write up here. All right, so that's medical health stuff. And then we have the list book. And I don't mark the beginning of the list book. I mark what I use most. So let's see here. I usually do, I think hashtags get like a rose gold. That's this one. You know what? I'm going to mix it up this year. Crazy. I'm going to use pink. So let's do pink for the first page of hashtags. This is just something that I flip to a lot. So it's good to be able to flip right to it. And the same thing with movies. That's like a, you know, every evening when you're unwinding, I tend to flip toward it. And that has always gotten kind of this bronzy color. It's like an antique gold. I think of it as like the Emmys or the Oscars would be gold like that. Okay, and then the weekly, and I actually had this one sticking out a little too far. And the nice thing about these Avery repositionable tabs is that, all right, I put it too far. Fine, I'll move it in a little bit. Okay, and then the weeklies start June 26th here, and I've just always had those as a pretty lavender color. Every planner I've ever had, I've marked it with this tab. So my brain just goes straight to that. All right, so there's my tabs. As you can see, I'm liking pastels and kind of beachy colors right now for summer, so this goes well. Okay. And now we're ready to put this in the traveler's notebook. So we'll put the front inside the folio pocket of that apple pig. And then you don't have to put these in, but I find it gives it a little extra stability if I put the bands on. All right. So how does that look? This one isn't even like the others. There, that makes me feel better. Okay. I'm not OCD or anything. All right, so Apple Pig Traveler's Notebook. We've got the Stalogy 
bullet journal and functional planner in the front, and then my commonplace book here with lettering, writing, venting, research notes, recipes, illustrations, everything in chronological order will go in this Loistrom 1917-80 GSM hardcover that's in the back. But that's how they look together. I think that looks pretty nice. So happy. All right, so in practice, I open it up, I wake up in the morning, I write down how many hours I slept and any notes about symptoms. Flip to this, I'm doing work, I need to mark off some hashtags. Okay, it's during the week, I'm planning, I'm maybe even painting some things that happened that week to do some cute little illustrations. And then I have the bookmark from the Loistrom for whatever page I'm on in my commonplace book here. And I'm not gonna put any bookmarks toward the back. I can just flip through when I want a scratch page. And I know that that very last spread is for forward planning. So there you go. All right, so if you have any questions about this whole setup or any of the supplies that I'm using, please feel free to put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to follow more of my planning, journaling, painting, anything to do with making paper look pretty, then please definitely subscribe and hit like and all that good stuff. And if you'd like to, take a peek at my Patreon. I offer digital goodies at the lower tier and then at the higher tiers I will actually send you real mail with little stickers and embellishments and paper samples and whatever I feel like sending each month. It's a little surprise in your mailbox. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.